As the news cameras captured looters from the air, small business owner and genocide survivor Rumpo Chim was on the ground in the middle of it all. It was very scary. Uh, it was just like a movie uh, from a movie script. I mean, they were coming left and right from every direction, and I had to point a gun at him. I had to tell him, I said, you need to leave. Chim eventually left his restaurant. When he returned, he found his business vandalized. His sister-in-law's jewelry store burned. We survived the Khmer Rouge and survived coming up here, uh, getting uh, uh, beat up uh, at a, as a young kid growing up here in the United States uh, when we first came here. Damage all the window. And now this is a flashback. People can say black life matter, but what about the Asian life and people's life all in general? Many residents and small business owners in Long Beach escaped the horrors of the Khmer Rouge genocide in Cambodia during the 1970s. Jim says as immigrants, they too faced racism in the U.S. He says these looted buildings are another injustice. As protests over the death of George Floyd continue across the nation, many Cambodian Americans also want to give voice to their experience over the years. This is not only a fact. The lives are in the African American community, but it affects all of the minority, all their minority. It's just that what happened to us we then reported in most cases. Charles Song sees history repeating itself. He owned a small business in the 1990s and lived through the violence of the Los Angeles riots. I remember my uh, friend and I uh, on the rooftop. I had a K AK-47 and he had a shotgun. And, and the answer was very clearly, those who were able to protect themselves, they still have their store today. But this time, he fears some businesses may not recover. What's done is done, but I'm afraid the outcome. This is very traumatic for me. I have to go th back through all the memories I have experienced during the genocide and the level of fear I felt when I was a kid. Laura Sum lives in Cambodia town. She works in a trauma healing center, helping genocide survivors find peace from the past. She recognizes the symptoms of trauma here. I know the looters are hurting. I know my people are hurting. I know African Americans are hurting. And the only way is for us to come together. And I want to make sure that we don't blame the looters as the cause of all this. The system is behind all of this. For the people who resort to violence for social change, her message is this. You have to practice nonviolence. You have to speak up in a way that you don't hurt people like my own people. This is our aftermath. Elizabeth Lee, VOA News.